thanks again for the nice introduction and uh, also Fabian for the invitation for having me here to talk at uh, Blockchance 23. Um, I think since the last time, 21 has changed a lot. Um, actually, we saw this time, that one and a half years ago, we, we see the future, but we didn't. So that's the reason why today we talk about new reality, the emergence of generation AI. Okay, that's fine. So, a uh, quick note on uh, Gedankenfabrik. We are revention consultancy specialized in transformation, people, and technology, and we live our mantra everything plus CI. Um, my side. Okay, that's work. Okay, very good. Then on my side, I started my journey uh, in the FMCG market, uh, Procter & Gamble, Coke. Um, then I moved on the internet space, eBay and Google, and I was in charge of the startups. And after a while, I realized explaining the offline world to the online world and vice versa was boring. So I started and founded the Gedankenfabrik as a reinvention concept where we try to help and guide people and companies through the internet, uh, intelligent transformation phase, the AI era. Uh, we developed a concept called Reinvention Wheel, a transformation concept where we focus on five dimensions. Rethink the customer, because it always starts with the customer. Rebuild your brand. Uh, Rematching creativity, it's all about transformational ideas. And the first three dimensions are more promising. The fourth one, reshape innovation is delivering. And the last one, relearn forever, because we are strong believers in lifelong learning. And at the end of the day, people will make the difference. Uh, today, the next 10 minutes, we talk about the emergence of Generation AI, where we focus on that, that we say humans are at the center of everything, and we are happy to announce that we will show you a sneak preview of our brand new ChatGPT Report 23, where we'll show you some, some data on action usage of ChatGPT in Germany and a little bit on the US, and three takeaways to round it up. From the, from the consumer side, we are not talking so much about the consumers anymore. We believe that everybody of us transforming into an educated decision maker because over the last, say, 20 years and so, we have learned a lot. So starting the enabling phase with Google, eBay, learning search and trading with foreigners and so on, um, Facebook, we learned a lot. Then I, the iPhone came, the iPhone moment, the apps came. So this is a steep learning curve what we have. And we believe that actually ChatGPT is a tipping point, even accelerating the learning curve. So by the end, uh, consumers, people like us, we will be educated decision maker and we will be in the driving seat. The biggest opportunity and challenge for companies is to deal with this new phenomenon of people, ADMs, and technology. So it's really, really important to understand and better manage the human tech fit. And we have heard so much about GPT that we said we really want to know what's going on in Germany. And um, actually, we did the research. We started last Thursday with our partner, Apinio, and we had the results on Friday. Now, these are brand fresh news results. And I will show a little bit German data, a little bit US. What's interesting is when we had the question, have you heard about GPT? Seven out of 10 Germans have heard about it. And this is across um, all age groups. Um, because uh, this is really, really probably unique that not only Generation Z, but all the baby boomers have heard about it. So on the one side, there's high awareness, and we should really uh, think about it. It's just seven months ago when there was the official launch of ChatGPT. And then we ask um, how many participants use ChatGPT, so we have around 70% awareness, then 70% actually use it, so all in all, 50% of Germans have already actively used ChatGPT. And these are incredible numbers because, I see just from the audience, the proliferation of new products normally works in a different way with the young ones. And I would say the elder generation takes them in more time to use it. But this is, this is really, really incredible. On the other hand, we ask the question, how often do we use ChatGPT? And a quarter of the respondents use it on a daily basis. Um, and this is just the beginning. So it's a it's huge, huge uh, level of usage. Uh, for what purpose was, was interesting? I think that's something we expect a little bit. So half of people, 50% uh, uses for work and for private. So, but for employers, it's important that people are not waiting until employers have decided what to do. 
because one question was, what is your company's position in using ChatGPT? And for one third, there was no real, I would say, statements or guardrails to how to use it. So this is probably a potential employees really have to, to, to learn, understand uh, how to do it. Uh, what is ChatGPT used for? Um, this is a broad range, as we can see, um, in terms of research. I think this also probably fits to your experience, where you can say, okay, use the research, use it for presentation, and so on. So a broad range. So what we expect is, is probably a lot to come. And now I need your uh, participation a little bit. Um, the question we ask, and maybe you take a mobile phones, is was which efficiency productivity gains um, do you expect uh, through uh, AI in your workspace? And interesting was this question alone. I think uh, the question a year ago, probably nobody would have understood. And let's see what the audience, let's go. Okay, okay, good. One in 25, 15, cool. Very good. Interesting. So you can see, wow, we have a lot of optimists, realists, not really pessimists. So I think from the audience here, probably a lot, you know, an increase of 25 plus percent. Cool. 25, 25. And this were the results from Germany, from the German users. So 10% more than 25% and so on. So I, I think these are greatly high numbers because you have to think about it. Uh, people using ChatGPT think about their potential, their expectation of productivity and efficiency gains. And uh, so 70% uh, think this uh, has a positive impact. In the US, and there's probably always, they're even more optimistic. There are 20, more than 25% expect an increase of 25 plus percent. These are incredible numbers because that means that employees have a, even more, I would say, as the US or in Germany, positive outlook on the potential use of GPT. And this, this has a huge impact on what will come, on you know, how management will work with that and so on. But actually, as an employ, employer and as a manager, you would say, wow, uh, people really think about the opportunities. On the other side, uh, ChatGPT is not the only generative AI people use. So we asked the question, which generative AI tools do you use in addition to ChatGPT? And the winner is Bing. Um, and I think that it will be interesting to see, actually, in terms of usage of Bing and Edge browser, what will come up. But the important thing is that people are not sticking to one uh, AI tool or application. They work with more. So chaining different AI tools probably will enhance the outcome of work even stronger. And then one question what we had, this was interesting, is the trade-off. What would be you willing to give up always when you use uh, ChatGPT instead? So really a trade-off question. And what I found interesting was that almost 25% say, yeah, I don't need a home office anymore if I can use ChatGPT in the future. About Christmas parties, I'm not so sure. But the important thing is there's a clear trade-off. So people see the value in it. Um, companies with you know, limited uh, regulations, not really at the moment. So all in all, uh, I think it will have an impact. That's the reason why we think it's a tipping point in terms of the evolution. Um, so what we see is that it has an impact on all generations, doesn't matter if Z, X, millennials, and so on. So that's the reason why we call it now actually the emergence of generation AI. Arca means all of us. Um, and it took just seven months. Three uh, key takeaways, what we, we see will change is that actually when we work, preparation will be more important. So we, before we start working, we have to understand what are, is the impact of uh, tools, applications. So that means in the traditional way you were working, you were thinking about objective rationale, so preparation and implementation. In the future, people will think much more about available tools, uh, about their, actually their potential, how to be more creative. Uh, so this will change the way how we will work and actually uh, how we will, you know, um, work in offices or wherever. And this was not coming overnight, so there was a process like year by year, but it feels like in 23 everything happens at the same time. So again, high usage of GPT, more, more products to use. Second one is exploit the serendipity factor. I think probably based on all of our experience, when you work with Michiano or Dali, you have to be open because something will come up during the process. So you have to learn 
not only to write the right prompts, you have to learn and understand how to judge the creativity, the outcome of it. That's the reason why we believe that a uh, growth mindset is not enough anymore. You need a creative mindset. So you really have to be willing to, you know, to try out new things, to create new things. So that means this is really a new way of what you actually, how you, you, you do your work and how to create, I would say, more positive outcome. The third one is merge the emerging. Um, that means actually, you know, new technologies are merging and converting. So that means, as we said before, people are using more AI tools. So if you just take the example, when you want to, you know, produce a video or whatever, you use Midjourney and GPT-4, and so everything is coming connected. So you have to learn actually how to do it step by step, how it is connected, and uh, this is a huge learning process. And I think that at the moment, when you do it on an individual pace, it's still you have to do step by step, but there will be more automated forms in the future. So all in all, um, um, it's incredible what will come up in terms of usage and how people see it. Um, and as always, there's, there's one more thing, and we believe strong in everything plus the AI, but actually everything plus AI, including everyone. And, but this is another story, and I'm sure that, um, especially later on in the panel and tomorrow, a lot of people will say a lot of great things about AI. So um, I really enjoyed the presentation, and hopefully we'll see each other again, maybe next time at the Block Chance. Thank you. So if you want to really uh, learn the reinvention wheel, so also here QR code, so and nice questions, and so you can learn. And whenever you have questions, just contact me, and I'm happy to share also the results. They will be sent out tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Carl.